name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, and welcome to Christ Church in Pelham, New York. Today is the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. My name is Matthew Mead. I am the rector and one of the clergy members on staff here at Christ Church. It's a pleasure to have you worshiping with us today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you've made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly and casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make this gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue at Capernaum and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now 
Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed. As Simon and his companions hunted for him, when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about prayer, and I'm going to link that to our Gospel account. Today's Gospel marks a transition. It's really early on in Jesus' ministry, but it's one of the biggest and first transitions that happens in St. Mark's account of Jesus' ministry. Um, and it revolves around prayer. 
Now, up to this point, Jesus's ministry has been decidedly local. He's been spending time in Capernaum. He's called local fishermen as his disciples. He's been attending the local synagogue. He has been preaching, healing, and casting out demons in town. And localist of all, he's been staying at his friend's home uh, and operating his ministry out of the house of Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. And this is where the first part of our gospel takes place. But this local ministry changes gears and begins to expand into a more regional ministry when the whole city shows up at the door. Now, you'd think that that moment would be some triumphant thing when you know, it would be the culmination of some successful ministry, and perhaps it is. But what's really fascinating is that Jesus takes this opportunity to leave town and do something different. He wakes up early in the morning and goes out to a deserted place for prayer. When he is eventually found by his disciples, he tells them after praying that their ministry is now going to enter a new phase and a next step. And he says, quote, our ministry is going to be to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also for that is what I came out to do. And this is the first spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ from Capernaum to the Galilee region, eventually to all of Judea and into Samaria. And when Jesus goes to Jerusalem throughout the city until he's crucified and then he rises from the dead and his apostles continue in that shared ministry, spreading the good news out throughout the entire world until it gets to us today. And prayer is a centerpiece of that. And it obviously has always been a major part of being a Christian. Prayer is actually embedded in the Ten Commandments. They're right there, the Ten Commandments. And the fourth one is about prayer. This is the fourth one. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Our catechism, which is a really useful thing at the back of our prayer book, it's called the Outline of Faith or Catechism, and it's a short summary of various Christian teaching. And the Catechism looks at each of the Ten Commandments, including this fourth one, and paraphrases and expands on each one. If you don't know the Catechism, take a look at it. It's really useful. But what it says about the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, is this. Our duty to God includes setting aside regular times for worship, prayer, and the study of God's ways. Now that's obviously a bit of an expansion. The Sabbath is only one day a week, and the fourth commandment doesn't go into much detail about how we are to observe it and keep it holy. But the prayer book, following both Jewish and Christian traditions and teachings, uses that commandment as a platform and starting point for placing prayer at the center of every single aspect of our lives. Not just a once a week thing, but something that is day by day and hour by hour and cultivated and revisited again and again regularly. Something that we don't just set a day aside for or an hour each week, but something that we set regular times aside for so that when we need prayer and need to grab hold of it, we are prepared and practiced at it. And those things go hand in hand. It's much easier to pray when you need to if you've already been setting aside regular times for it. Now, Jesus prayed all the time, and today's gospel account provides just one example. There are numerous others that are told to us by the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, some of the big, more famous ones. You remember when Jesus fed 5,000 and then when he walked on water? Well, there is something that happens in between those two things. He goes up onto a mountain and he spends time in prayer. Do you remember at the end of the gospel when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and Judas shows up with the soldiers? Do you know what Jesus is doing? He's praying. He's been at prayer in the garden. The Sermon on the Mount, which you probably know pretty well, is Jesus' most famous teaching 
And a large part of it is about prayer, who to pray for, how to pray. Jesus reminds us in the Sermon on the Mount, frankly directs us, that we're called to pray for people that are our enemies, not just our friends, but our enemies and even those people who persecute you, persecute us. When Jesus was asked once, Lord, how do we pray? Teach us to pray. The answer he gave was the Lord's Prayer. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know the rest. Prayer is a centerpiece in Jesus's ministry. And beyond that, we know from Jesus's actions, not just his words, that prayer was an enormous part of his regular life. He went to the synagogue regularly. He observed the Sabbath. He also observed holy days. And he, when he was in Jerusalem, he spent lots of time in the temple. From all that we know about Jesus, and we know quite a bit, we can confidently say that he was a person of deep prayer. He didn't just observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. He did do that, but he went beyond that. He went well beyond that and made prayer a regular part of his daily and hourly life. And importantly, as today's gospel illustrates, he took time to pray before making a big or important decision or before starting out on something new. How many times in your life have you encountered a major decision? How many times has prayer accompanied that? How often do you take time for prayer alone or in small groups beyond Sunday morning? How often do you pray? Each day offers numerous opportunities for each of us to set aside regular times for prayer, worship, and the study of God's ways. Start amping up your prayer life. Use Lent. It's right around the corner. Ten days from today is Ash Wednesday. Use Lent to add some regular times for worship and prayer and Bible study to your week. Sunday services are a great start, but I think each of us is called to move it up a notch. So I encourage you, take it up a notch. Take your prayer life up a couple of steps. Add the holy days when they come. The next one is Ash Wednesday. That's an easy one. The Annunciation is March 25th. I'll see you there. There won't be ashes on Ash Wednesday this year because it's a pandemic, but there is an even better opportunity this year. We don't have to focus on those physical rituals. We can focus instead on the spiritual prayers and penance that are the heart of that special day. Now, the pandemic has also made it easy to join in weekday prayer services online at the church, and I encourage you to join in. If you don't know the full schedule, it's actually increased a little bit lately. Every Tuesday morning at 10.30, a group of us gathers for morning prayer on Zoom. It's at 10.30 a.m. It's over by 11 a.m. On Tuesday nights, Deacon Chisara is offering evening prayer at 9 p.m. Conclude your day with prayer. On Thursdays, bright and early at 8 a.m., I'm offering a Bible study. We'll be done by 8.45. All three of these are on Zoom. You can log in from home. You can even look at it on your phone. It couldn't be easier. Take the opportunity and knock your prayer life up a couple of notches. But don't let the church be your only house of prayer, whether it's online or in person. The church is a house of prayer. Make your home, like the home of Andrew and Peter, a house of prayer. Now, I hope you're teaching your kids to say grace before meals, to say their prayers before they go to bed, and I hope you're doing that too. Don't be embarrassed about prayer, especially in your own home, because it's your house of prayer. I encourage you to pray before you make any major decisions, just like Jesus did, or before you go on any trips or journeys, just like Jesus did. Pray when you're angry with a family member or with a friend. Pray when someone needs comfort. Pray for your enemies. Put prayer at the center of all you do. And as St. Paul says, 
Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. And pray for me. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Please join me in saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Our prayers are asked especially for Marion, Marcia, Jenny, Bronwyn, Barbara, Nicholas, Randy, Sonia, Mary, Ralph, Heather, Betty, Tom, Kate, Brian, Monica, Rebecca, Janet, Ellen, Alexia Grace, Allison, Greg, John, Emma, Hildy, Jason, Shay, Kara, Stephanie, Robert, Susan, Dawn, Zandra, Ziggy, Joyce, Andy, Julie, Scott, Robert, Sherry, Janet, Rob, Drew, Rob, Bill, Lael, m and Sandy, and Katie. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week and in the coming week. Anne Cerise, Joe Goonan, Justice Diakite, Kathy Arquilla, Ronan Cook, Juan Pena, and Michael Fawcett. Our prayers are asked for all medical professionals and staff, for those working towards treatment and a cure for COVID-19, for all first responders and for all providing care during this pandemic especially Russ, Jordan, Anna, Nicholas, Amy, Christine, Jasmine, Jennifer, Tony, Peter, Charles, Christine, Sean, Katie, Naima, Sandra, Jim, Claire, Navalette, and Karis. We remember and pray for the nearly half a million Americans who have died from COVID-19, and we pray also for all who mourn. We pray for those in our armed services, especially Joseph, Kevin, Jack, Leopold, Philip, Jake, Matthew, Robert, Philip, Jason, Nicholas, Martina, Sam, Jack, 
Helen, Mitchell, Tia, Tyrese, and Terrence. We pray that all elected and appointed officials may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world, especially Joseph, our president. Grant our nation peace and help us to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. We pray for those who have died, especially Lauren Martelli Revens. May her soul and the souls of the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you've promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Have a great week. God bless you. And remember that Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, is coming up in a little more than one week. I'll see you next Sunday. And again, I'll see you on Ash Wednesday. God bless. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and God bless you all.